can't look at Trump and think this guy can manage anything. You can't lecture people that the economy is better than they think it is. They're their own referee. Welcome to Political Experts React, where we break down political ads and media, explain what the people behind them are trying to accomplish, and decide whether or not they did a good job. I'm Dan Pfeiffer, former communications director for Barack Obama, and joining me today is former campaign manager and senior advisor to Barack Obama, David Pluff. David Pluff, welcome back to Political Experts React. How you doing, man? Pfeiffer, always good to talk political ads with you, although let's hope the Phillies win tonight. <laughs> if they don't, no ad will look good to me for at least six months. That's the worst loss in Philly sports history. All right, let's get into this. The first ad we're going to watch is from the Biden campaign. He says he stands with auto workers, but as president, Donald Trump passed tax breaks for his rich friends while automakers shuttered their plants and Michigan lost manufacturing jobs. Joe Biden said he'd stand up for workers and he's delivering, passing laws that are increasing wages and creating good paying jobs. Manufacturing is coming back to Michigan because Joe Biden doesn't just talk, he delivers. I'm Joe Biden and I approve this message. Some context for this ad is the Biden campaign ran this earlier in the year when Trump went to Michigan while Biden was there at the outset of the UAW strike. What do you think of this approach to trying to win the economic messaging war here? Well, first, Dan, Trump is an unhinged, you know, lunatic. That being said, it worries me as a Democrat because I think there's profit there for him if he can make or at least pretend to make a greater common cause with workers, even union workers. So I think it's good the Biden campaign's taken it seriously. Probably doesn't surprise you. I love the fact that it's a state specific ad. You know, that's not going to make a bad ad a good ad, but it does make a difference. I think it makes people in that state listen more. And I thought the back end of the ad was terrific. I think it makes the case for what Biden's done from a policy standpoint that's lifted manufacturing jobs. And I thought taking a shot at Trump is great. I don't love the fact that it was factual, like Donald Trump says he's for the auto workers and then he did these things. Part of it, you want to say this guy's full of shit, you know, like give me a break. This guy's entire presidency was taking care of wealthy people who crap in gold toilets and screwing workers. Like, I think there has to be a little more emotion in my humble opinion. You know, my sense is I don't think we should see many positive Biden ads going forward. I think pretty much everything can have a positive component, but it's got to be comparative. I mean, his approval ratings are not high. He's at risk of losing this election. There's questions about age. We, we know all the challenges. That being said, you know, he's probably 50-50 chance, maybe a little better to win. But I don't think you're going to get there by just touting your record. I think the, the great thing about this ad is it probably imparts some important information to Michigan voters about the manufacturing sector and Biden's policies. But it also tries to tear the, the tarnish off Trump, which I think is smart. In recent history, every person who's won, at least in the exit polls on the question of who you trust in the economy, has won the presidency. Biden has a historic deficit there right now. Can you get all the way there or close enough with a mostly contrast negative message? Well, not surprisingly, coming from you, Pfeiffer, that is incredibly smart and maybe the most important question. Of course, you're going to try and narrow the gap as much as possible, but you probably have to be prepared to win the presidency, losing that top line question on the economy. Now, as you know, questions underneath of that, who will look after workers, not the wealthy, you know, who invest in manufacturing, those types of questions Biden might be able to win, even though he might be losing that top line question of who's better on the economy. I don't know how big the gap can be because with Trump, you have abortion, you have democracy, you have most people don't want to come back for a rerun of that craziness. That being said, if the gap's eight or 10 points, that's probably impossible to overcome. And of course, the thing that's looming out there that, you know, a lot of economic experts think will happen, let's hope it doesn't for a bunch of reasons, is we slide into recession. It's going to be really hard to win if we don't win the top line question, but we might have to. So let's make sure we narrow the gap as much as possible, win some of those sub questions, and then, of course, run the race that we think is going to give us the best chance to win. But now the thing about Trump is he gives Biden the best alternative of anybody in the Republican field to make it about other things. The way I sort of think about this is the question on the economy is not really about who is going to manage the economy best, because you can't look at Trump and think this guy could manage anything. What it is, is that who are you looking out for? Are you fighting for people like me? However you want to phrase that question. And the economy has always mattered the most because it has been the preeminent issue in every election for 50 years now. That may not be the case this time. I agree with you. But Joe Biden is particularly well suited to pound that message. Like all I care about is welders and auto workers and teachers and nurses. I do think in the polling right before COVID hit in terms of voters approval of the economy, it was like 60 percent 
So Trump's ability to say, hey, I had this great economy. You all thought so. COVID screwed it up is a real thing. As much as obviously it was largely he inherited Barack Obama's economy and sailed, <laughs> you know, on top of that. But but that is a real thing. Now, you know, I think Biden can still prosecute that values case you talked about. But this return to a good economy message, if Trump was ever able to be disciplined, you know, I think is going to pay dividends for him. And that's why you asked the really important question, which is you better be prepared you know, to win this campaign, even if you're losing that top line number. And even though you never surrender on that, it's quite possible you do. The way I sometimes tell it is that campaigns are a little like the Olive Garden. The customer is always right. So it's yeah, like, right. Who, who, who cares what the Council of Economic Advisors tells you? If the voters say it, that's the reality in which you have to operate. All right. The next ad we're going to watch is from Future Forward, which is a Democratic super PAC supporting Joe Biden. We know the oil companies rip us off. The utility companies, they rip us off too. We like the idea of clean energy. If only it were more affordable. Well, now it will be. President Biden signed a major ramp up in clean energy production, ramping up solar and wind energy. Making more clean energy means the cost of it will go down. And then if you decide to switch, you'll pay less every month. With this plan, the president is working to save us money. And we appreciate that. Given everything we just talked about in terms of how you think about messaging in this economy, what do you think of this spot? Well, listen, there's clearly an audience that needs to know more about what Biden's done on clean energy. By the way, that's not just swing voters. That's some of our base voters, too. Yeah. So I think that's important. Obviously, the oil companies are rightfully always uh, a great villain in a spot. OK, they're gouging us. Then it was almost like disconnected. Then it's like, here's all the stuff Biden's done. Like, I'm not sure people understand that, like, wait. Does all the investments then mean the oil companies will stop gouging us? I don't know about that, but I think it's a good spot. I think every spot probably that anybody runs should be a comparison with Trump. So maybe you say Trump allows the oil companies to gouge us. I just think we have to set up that contrast. It takes the like green energy investments a little bit out of the clouds and puts them into people's homes. You're going to save money. I'd probably like a little bit more about what the average American would save. I'm also super curious. This is a total like one eyed cat. But like how many swing voters have enough thermostats? Maybe a lot do. But my guess is a lot don't. So I'm not sure that was the right visual. Sorry, man. Big time rabbit rat hole. But yeah. um but, you know, I thought it was fine. Again, I think I think everything has to be here's what Trump would do or here's what Trump did. Here's why this is going to screw your family. And pretty soon the messaging is going to have to turn to what is Biden going to do? Because, as you know, elections are way more about the future than the past. Incumbents, as you know, struggle with that. I mean, I don't know how many times Barack Obama talked to you about having better messaging and communication. <laughs> OK, and me too. OK, but like they all think that's the key to the kingdom. And of course, it's important. But generally, particularly when you're incumbent running in you know, when you've got numbers like this, you know, the all positive stuff's not going to get the job done. I am sort of a mixed view on this ad. I will say that it wasn't a rabbit hole. The Nest thermostat stuck out to me too. And I say this because I have a Nest thermostat in my house. And when people come stay with me, the amount of times I'm trying to explain to them how to use it, it, it <laughs> yeah. is not, it's not a, a uh, it's yeah. not a, a, it's not as common as those of us here in Northern California may think or all around the country. We do have a whole bunch of people who voted for Joe Biden in 2020 who are not with him right now. And we do have to find a way to communicate with those people. But when we get to further down the line and you're looking at the people who are swinging back and forth or thinking of voting for no labels or Cornell West or RFK Jr., then the best way to do that is probably to scare the living shit about them about what a Trump presidency is, as opposed to just telling them how awesome Biden was. No, I think you make a good point. And listen, I thought there was, there's a lot in the back end there that will be informative to people, maybe inspiring to people, a new information that's good. And not to pencil fuck the script to death, but basically my problem is if you're going to do comparative, why not say, you know, Donald Trump, you know, in bed with the oil industry, wants to stop making electric cars, no more windmills, Joe Biden sees the future, right? And of course, listen, groups like Virtue Forward, I'm sure have research suggesting this is the way to go. We should be careful about criticizing from the cheap seats. But but that, those are the couple of things that stuck out at me about that. Yeah, that is always an important caveat here is we know these people, we've worked with them, the people who are doing these ads for Biden, doing it for Future Forward. They do not put money behind a piece of content without some pretty assiduous testing of it. So there's clearly some merit in what they're doing. This isn't necessarily the ad they're running in October of 2024, just because they're running in October of 2023. It's a ladder up to that next argument. All right, people. This is the part of the show where I normally beg you to smash the subscribe button. But today, I have an announcement. We've hit the big time here at Political Expert React. We now have a sponsor 
The sponsor is one of my favorite products I've ever used, Zbiotics. Zbiotics is a pre-alcohol biotic and the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol and drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Whenever we go on tour, we like to have a cocktail before and during the show and sometimes afterwards. Zbiotics has changed my life. Love this product. So happy that they are supporting Political Experts React. Go to zbiotics.com slash experts to get 15% off your first order when you use experts at checkout. Thanks to Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. The last ad we're going to watch is from the Virginia Democrats. MAGA Republicans are after one thing, power. And if they win total control of Virginia this fall, they'll pass an extreme agenda, banning abortion across the Commonwealth, rolling back gun safety laws, taking away voting rights, and pushing more tax loopholes for the super rich paid for by working people. This November, MAGA Republicans are coming for your rights and your freedoms. Don't let them raise their flag over your capital. What do you think of this spot? I mean, listen, as a Democrat, I love the entire spot, right? I assume this is a spot that they believe works both maybe to help some turnout targets, uh, but also, you know, swing voters outside of, of Richmond in, in the northern Virginia suburbs as well. Like, I think it, it raises the stakes of the contest. You know, the question is, in those individual legislative districts, will voters believe those Republican candidates are extreme MAGA. But, you know, at the end of the day, I thought it was a very, very effective ad. This to me is is an arresting spot and it raises the stakes of what would happen if they have full control. So my hope is, and, and my expectation is, it'll be effective with the targets they're trying to reach. But I'm eager to hear your views on it. Yeah, I think for the purposes of this race in this yeah. state, this is a very effective ad. And I think yeah. What we know about January 6th and MAGA extremism as a message that it works best with, and we saw this in 2022, college-educated voters, independents, and Republicans, and Virginia is swimming in those voters. And those are people most likely to turn out in an off-year election. I think for the broader electorate all across the country, you know, another tens of millions of people who get in for the general, you're going to need more than just the MAGA stuff. But I think for this race in this time, it's pretty effective. And, and going back to your original thought and question about, you know, can Biden close the deficit on the economy? I mean, these Virginia candidates are running at a time where, you know, Virginia voters are dissatisfied with the economy. This does a very good job of raising these other issues and, you know, making an offensive argument on the economy, which is always our strongest argument, which is if they get power, they're going to basically feather the nest of the wealthy and screw workers. But it'll be interesting to see what the analysis of it is, because there may be some things that the Biden White House and Democrats can learn from it. Yeah, I have no doubt that they are using this state to test a bunch of different messaging, both content and delivery mechanisms to get to the voters we need. The results are going to decide what the rest of our year looks like. If uh, it's a good election for Democrats, people are going to feel pretty good. If it's a bad election, the, uh, <laughs> the, the Democratic panic is going to be uh, flowing through the streets. But either way, I expect the Biden folks will learn a lot from how it went. I agree. David Pluff, thank you for joining us once again here on Political Act React. Always a pleasure, Mr. Piper. Go Phillies. Thanks for watching these ads and videos with us. If you have anything you'd like us to break down, let us know in the comments. See everyone next time.